loved ones. We thank you because your faith has found us worthy. We thank you for sustaining us for Jesus to see all these days. We thank you, Father, for opening our eyes we got to new realities. We thank you for the expressions of grace that we are expressing. That we are, we are, we are, we are having, oh God, Father, that we are coming into even in this season. We thank you for your mighty and powerful hand that upholds us, Lord Jesus, oh God. We thank you, Father, even for your preservation power over our lives, oh God. Father, we magnify you. You are the God of all ages, oh God. You are the God of all days, oh God. God. We thank you, Father, because in you is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and power. Lord, we magnify you. Ancient of days, we give it the glory. I am that I am, we magnify you. We praise you, Father. You are the lily of the valley. You are the bright and morning star. We thank you, Jesus, because, Lord, you are even dawning in our hearts, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, because it's in you that we live and move and have our being. Thank you, because all our life is hidden in Christ in God. Thank you, because we have a godly heritage. Oh, Father, we bless we bless you tonight, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We glorify you, Lord. Man, shala badu shaka da da baha, rara badu shipe de de bo shaka da da baha, reko si ya da da badu shaka da baha, man shala do si ente de de bo shaka da da baha, lepe de de bo si ya da da badu shaka da da baha, ike to si ya da da mando reko shanta da baha, ipa do ike de de reka di ba zuka da baha. I pray, oh God, that even as we continue, Father, with another session today, Father, cause us to steward this season of our lives, oh God, cause us to be intentional about this season of our lives. Lord Jesus, oh God. Thank you, Father, because you are helping us to be intentional. Thank you, Father, because you are opening our eyes, oh God. You are opening our ears, oh God. You are causing our hearts to be receiving Holy Spirit of God in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Spirit of the living God, we worship you tonight, this morning. We ask you to come and take preeminence, come and take control over everything we do tonight. Spirit of the sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known with me. The glory of the living God. Spirit of the sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. Spirit of the sovereign Lord, come. 
Yes, we welcome your presence, Spirit of the Sovereign God. Come and make your presence known in our hearts. Come and make your presence known in our midst this morning. Let the life of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom reign us. Let the weight of your glory. Let the weight of your glory. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the life of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom reign us. Let the weight of your glory. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory. Let the weight of your glory. Let the weight of your glory cover. Let the life of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom reign in me. Let the weight of your glory. 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 Akashuna brina na no suna ne chande araba. Bana kanda era mo na chinda e pola yada brosh na na na. E na na suna ne kaya yada mo na nibra yada mo suna na de. I see Jesus seated on the throne. I see his angels ascending everywhere. I see the spirit fixing things again. So hallelujah. To the Lamb upon the throne, I see Jesus seated on the throne. I see His angels ascending everywhere. I see the Spirit fixing things again. So hallelujah to the Lamb upon the throne. I see Yeshua seated on the throne. I see his angels ascending everywhere. I see the Spirit who is fixing things again. So hallelujah to the Lamb upon the throne. We see Rafa seated on the throne. 
We see his angels ascending everywhere. We see the spirit who is six and sins again. So hallelujah to the Lamb upon the throne. 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 We worship you. The lamb upon the throne, we worship you, we worship you. The lamb upon the throne, we worship you, we reverence you, Lord. You're the lamb upon the throne, we see you, we see you and bow before your throne. The lamb upon the throne, we see, we see your beautiful face and bow in worship. Mana kunda ya de de sin ma e ta ya da bo ta na na ke na ye la 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 sin na ni e la lo sha na ma ni kan de e mo na pri ya da do sin na ne kan de ya da ba ta na na de the lamb upon the throne we bow we bow in humble adoration and reverence to you Lord ke na mo sin na na pra na ye ta ya do sin na ne ta na na kan de ya da. The Lamb, the Lamb upon the throne, we see you, Lord. So I see Rafa seated on the throne. I see his angels sending everywhere. We see the elves worshiping the king. So hallelujah to the Lamb upon the throne. We join the elves, we join the angels, we join the elves, we join the elves, we join the elves, we join the angels, we join the elves. We join the angels, we join the elders, we join the in. Recently, the Lord has been teaching us about his secrets. And something something struck me studying the characters in the Bible the Lord dealt with. And the people he actually told specific things, people like like Noah, that he instructed on how to build the ark. He gave them details. He gave them specific details, inches and diameters and centimeters and what to do. People like Solomon, that he also gave nitty gritties about what the temple should look like. And something struck me about all these people. They never really asked. They never really asked. They never asked. Ask the Lord. No, I never said, Oh God, you know what? I want to build you an ark. So, how do I go about it? So, my didn't say, Oh Lord, you know what? I need to know how this temple is going to look like. How do you want it? So, what did they have in common? What did they all have in common? Moses never said to God, You know what? I need to write the Ten Commandments so that these people will know how to worship you, how to. How to serve you they, they don't know what they're doing so you know what let's let's talk about this let's just tell me what you want and i'll write it down 
Moses never said that. But all these people had one thing in common. They were not visitors to the secret place. They always stayed there. They were always dwelling in the secret place. It was a habitual habitation. That's what I like to call it. It was a habit of coming into the habitation of God. It was a habitual habitation. So I feel very strongly in this season that the Lord is calling us not just to be people who come to the secret place when it's time for prayer. In. When it's time to just pray in the morning. Oh, Pierre is going to say something wonderful today. Oh, Pastor Stephanie is going to say something wonderful. The, the worship is going to come strong. The Lord is saying, dwell. The Lord is saying, dwell. Many of the things we are struggling to get will come very easy when we dwell. When we just make him, make him, make his presence what we love. When you love something, you're not treasured to come into it. And you don't come into it sometimes. You just want to keep staying there. And staying there is not a function of fasting for seven days or fasting for 21 days, no. Staying there is being conscious, conscious of his presence that is within, that is around, that is for us. That is within, that is around, that is for us. Kanu brani amano punda ye pandesh na ni kunda la yada suna na mayada hoto. So beyond the prayer, when it all ends, just be conscious of the presence of the Lord that is within you, that is around you, that is for you. Na kusa na paya de bosh na na hande. But I teach us to dwell in your presence. Teach us to dwell in your presence. Teach us to dwell in your presence. Teach us to dwell in your secret place. Teach us to dwell in your presence. Teach us to look at your face. Teach us to dwell in your presence. Teach us to dwell in your presence. Teach us to dwell in your presence. Teach us to listen to your word. Teach us to listen to your heart. Teach us to gaze at your face. Teach us to dwell in your presence. Teach us to dwell in your presence. Teach us to dwell in your presence. Teach us to gaze at your face. Teach us to gaze at your face, to listen to your heart, to listen to your word, to listen to your heart, to listen to your word, to understand the promptings of your spirit, O God. Oh, make us dwellers of each and every one of us. Listen to your heart. Let us know what is to Father, let your voice be heard, O God. Let your voice be heard in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God, Mama, Hare Krishna, Mama. Help us to walk in your ways, O God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Rebosuna, Mama, Mama. 
Oh, submission, oh God, fully surrendered, oh God, to the government of your spirit. Cause your government to be established within me, O God. And O Suta de Brodo Suna Mama, the Carabo Suna Kaye de Borodomosia, the Brodo Suta de Brabaza Taye de Borodosuna Mama. Thank you, Jesus. The Carabo Suna Badi Brodo Sukari was a Taye de Badi de Borosuna Mama. Every moment, every moment, every second, you want to share your prayer. Teacher, stay in your prayer. Teacher, stay in your prayer. Teacher, stay in your prayer. Just Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, the Thank you, Jesus. Teachers to dwell in your presence. Oh. Yes, Lord, teach us to Yes, Lord, teach us to dwell in your presence, oh God. Teach us to stay in you, oh God. Teach us, Lord, not to be visitors of your presence, oh God, but to be dwellers, oh God. To be dwellers of in and of your presence, oh God. Teach us, oh God, what it means, Lord, to stay. See what your presence, oh God, to host your presence, my God. Teach us, teach us, teach us, teach us in this time and in this season, oh God, by your spirit. Teach us, lead us, oh God, by your spirit. Let us not be people that just come and take and leave, oh God. Let us not be quick to run from your presence, oh God. Let us never even have the mindset to run or to leave or to depart from your presence. Teach us, oh God, to be satisfied with you, oh God. Teach us how to stay in you, oh God. For in your presence there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. 
It is not about the things that bring joy or the pleasures and the satisfaction, oh God. But Father, it begins in your presence. It begins in your presence. Father, we make this prayer this morning and we say, teach us, oh God, how to dwell in your presence. Teach us the protocols, oh God, of abiding in your presence. Teach us, Father, how to be men and women, oh God, that understand, oh God, what it means to stand before you. Show us how to minister to you, oh God. Show us how to arise in the place, oh God, an office of our priesthood, my God. Help us, oh God. We are praying. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, teach us, teach us, teach us. Show us, Father, how to stand, oh God, before you, Father, oh God, as your my peace. God, teach me, oh God, as your beauty, oh God. Teach me, my God, to dwell in the place, oh God, Father, where I find you. in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. father we thank you we thank you, Father, because you have not called us to seek you in vain. We thank you, Almighty God, because every time we come before you, not only are we carriers of your presence, not only do we come to fellowship with you, O oh God, but Father, we come to minister to you as your priests, O oh God. We thank you, Father, because even in this season, Lord, you are teaching us, Lord, how to engage, O oh God, as priests, O oh God. You are teaching us how to understand, Lord, the functionalities of our office as priests, so God, that stand before you, that minister to you. Father, we thank you because you are opening our eyes and you are causing us to understand, Lord. You are establishing each and every one of us in the priesthood of Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, oh God, mm. because you are causing us, Lord, to mature in understanding, in knowledge, oh God, in wisdom and in stature. We mm. thank you. We thank you, Father, mm. because you are stretching us, oh God, and you are breaking every limitation and every boundary, oh God, in the spirit. Father, and you are causing us to shift, to grow, oh God, in the name of Jesus. You are causing us, Lord, to indeed become the ones, Lord, that carry your presence, that carry your mandates, that carry the kingdom, that carry heaven with us, oh God, in 
the name of Jesus, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God, because you are establishing your will over our lives. You are establishing your will upon the earth, even through our lives, O God. We thank you because you are strengthening us in conviction. You are strengthening us in understanding. You are strengthening yeah. each and one, each and every one of us in clarity, in articulation, Lord, in alignment, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. You are strengthening our feeble needs, O God. You are making us strong. You are giving us stamina by your spirit, O God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for strength. We thank you for strength. We thank you for strength over each and every one of us. Father, I pray this morning, Lord, over that person or over those people, Lord, that have been crying out to you and have been saying, Lord, why do I constantly feel weak? Why do I constantly have seasons of dryness, oh God, where one minute I'm on fire and another minute I am not able to contain the fire I have received in previous seasons. My Lord and my God, we thank, I thank you this morning because you are bringing deliverance to that person, Lord. Your word is being released this morning and it is yeah. encouraging, oh God. Father, I thank yeah. you because the ministry of encouragement reaches that person right now in the mighty yeah. name of Jesus. Father, I yeah. thank you because you are, you are strengthening, you are releasing strength and fresh grace upon your children, upon that person, upon those people this morning. I hear mm -hmm. the Lord saying there are five people that have cried out to him and have asked categorically, you know, and said, Lord, why do I keep going? Why do I keep feeling weak? Why do I keep um, having seasons of inconsistency? The Lord is saying mm. no more. The Lord is saying he is strengthening you. The Lord is saying that he is giving you the ability to stand. And not only will you stand in your standing, others will arise. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord is saying that I am giving you the burden. The burden that will not only cause you to be strengthened, but the burden that will cause you to birth in this season. Father, I thank you for your godly burden. I thank you, oh God, for your godly burden upon your people this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, Nebo Sultani Kataye Debo. Yes, Lord, godly burdens are being released. Godly burdens are being released. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Many times people ask, oh, how are you able to stay consistent? How are you able to do it? How are you able to stay, you know, constantly being on fire? In fact, as, as simple as even waking up every, every morning, you know, and when it's prayer in season, it's like we're going, everyone is going. I tell them, it's because for me, it has become an office. It is no longer whether I can or cannot do it. I have made the choice, that's one. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I see it as the mandate that God has given to me. It is the mandate God has given to me. And every time I arise and I see that this is what I must do, the grace of God is being released over me. Thirdly, it is responsibility. Responsibility strengthens you. Responsibility equips you in a way that um, wishes and desires cannot. When you receive the burden of the Lord and you accept it that this is your burden, this is your lot, this is your calling, and you know that there's no other way, there are no choices in the matter, it is your burden the Lord has given unto you. Once you accept it in your heart, that is it. The Lord sees that you have accepted it and he makes his grace available for you. And so, Father, this morning, Lord, I want you to even ask the Lord for a burden this morning. You know, a few days ago, I was I was just spending time with the Lord and I, I, I kept saying, Lord, I feel like I need a new burden. It's like I'm becoming a bit, you know, I, I, I just, I realized that I needed a new burden. And I said, Lord, please give me a new burden. Give me a new burden. Many times you may feel weak. Why? Because you are not putting to use the things that God has given to you. And if you don't constantly exercise the things that God releases over you, they become they, they, become, they just lay dormant and they lay fallow. And you know, when that happens, it, it's only a matter of time before it gets to the point of extinction. It's not that you don't have it anymore, but because you're not constantly using it and servicing it and oiling it, you know, it begins to lose its, its it begins to lose its essence. It begins to lose, um, um, you begin to lose your abilities. You begin to lose um, the things that, you know, that cause you to stand out. You begin to lose those things because you are not using them. When you're not using what the Lord has given you, automatically you are abusing it. You are saying, oh Lord, I know you have given me this thing, but I choose, you know, your, your, your actions 
are communicating to the Lord that you would rather not, that you would rather he didn't even bother you with the things that he has given to you. And so this morning, I want us first of all to repent, you know, and say, Father, I apologize and I repent of every time, Lord, that I have not stewarded the things, oh God, the blessings, the gifts that you have given to me. And Lord, Father, this morning, I pray that even as you open my eyes or as you release new burdens to me, oh God, I arise in responsibility. I arise in responsibility. You must arise in responsibility. You must arise in responsibility. Say, Father, I arise in responsibility. The responsibility that comes, Lord, with the burden that you give me. The responsibility that comes with the burden that you give me. Every time God spoke a word to the people in the Bible, to Gideon, to Mary, to Abraham, he released the burden but there was a responsibility for them. Father, I arise, oh God, in responsibility, Lord, to match, Lord, with the burdens that you have given to me in this season. I will not allow the burden to fall. I will not allow the burden to drop off of my hands, oh God. I will not sleep, oh God, on my watch in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not go and lay fallow, Lord, the things that you have caused me to cultivate, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, let's open to Ezekiel 47. Um, we're, we're, we're going to spend some time praying this morning and I love that we have the opportunity in between the sessions you know to just take time out to pray uh, what prayer does you know like we've said uh, previously is that prayer is like taking the words that you have received. It's like taking vitamins and administering it to your body. It's like taking the ointment, the oil of the word of God and massaging it into your body, into your life, into your being. So when we come to make prayers, it is not a religious activity, but we are ministering to the Lord. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that the prayers of the saints were released and, you know, um, it, it likened, it explained the prayers of the saints as incense that was released released before the presence of God. So you see, when we are praying, we are worshiping, we are doing that which is expected, we are doing that which God desires. And the incense that is released from our prayers is a sweet smelling fragrance. As the priests, the, the priests that function in the office, you know, in the office, as we function in our office as priests, according to the priesthood of Christ Jesus, one of the things that we must understand is we must make prayers. We must make prayers. We must always pray. And in order for us to be able to pray, we must know the word of God. And that's why we teach and we pray. We hear the word and we pray so that we are led by the spirit of God, so that we are led by the spirit of God. We receive the word and we pray. So we're going to be spending some time praying this morning, declaring this morning, releasing the word of God over our lives, releasing incense before the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this morning what we are doing this morning is we are ministering to him in the office of our priesthood in the name of jesus so let's open ezekiel 47 this text was given to us in um on the second day i believe um of prayer read was one of the things that we were asked to study and i just want us to read some um, verses of this scripture and we'll pray so from verse one i hope we have our bibles open from verse one um then he, my guide, brought me back to the door of the house, the temple of the Lord. And behold, water was flowing from under the threshold of the house, of the temple, toward the east. For the front of the temple was facing east. And the water was flowing down from under, from the right side of the house, from south of the altar. 
Then he brought me out by way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gate by the way of the gate that faces east. And behold, water was spurting out from the north side of the gate. When the man went out toward the east with a measuring line in his hand, he measured a thousand cubits and he led me through the water, water that was ankle deep. Again, he measured a thousand cubits and led me through the water, water that was knee deep. Again, he measured a thousand cubits and led me through the water, water reaching the heaps. Again, he measured a thousand cubits and it was a river that I could not pass through for the water had risen, enough water to swim in a river that could not be crossed by wading. What wading is, is using your efforts. You know, I'm going um, okay, either left with, the or, left the you left the here and went to bed. Either, I'm sorry, if there's noise in your background, please mute your mic, thank you. Um, going with, um, with the, gra um, the, 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 the grain or against the grain and just pushing with, you know, pushing and, um, making paving your way through through the water that is what wading looks like so there's some effort and there's some strength that you have to put in to be able to wade through water you can wade through water when it is ankle deep you can wade through water when it is knee deep but now the bible is telling us that it was no longer even referred to as water it had now become a river and it was now um it had gotten to the heap level and um the angel led him through the water. The water was knee deep. Um, sorry, the water was, it had got into his hip. It had risen enough water to swim, a river that could not be crossed by wading. So at this point, the human efforts couldn't be used to navigate or to travel or to go past this point, to go past this season, to go past this time, to go past this day, to go past this age. And he said to me, son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me back to the bank of the river. Now, when I had returned, behold, on the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. Then he said to me, these trees go out toward the eastern region and go down into the Arabah, the Jordan, the Jordan Valley. Then they go toward the sea, being made to flow into the sea, and the waters of the Dead Sea shall be healed and become fresh. It will come about that every living creature which swarms in every place where the river goes will live. And there will be a very great number of fish because the waters go there so that the waters of the sea are healed and become fresh. So everything will live wherever the rivers go. And it will come about that fishermen will stand beside it at the banks of the Dead Sea from Engedi to, Eneg to Eneglem there will be dry places to spread nets. Their fish will be of very many kinds, like the fish of the great, but its swamps and marshes will not become fresh and wholesome for animal life. They will, as the river subsides, be left encrusted with salt. By the river on its bank, um, on one side and on the other will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. They shall bear every month because their water flows from the sanctuary and their fruit will be good for food and their leaves for healing. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. The first thing I want us to pray this morning, according to this scripture, I'd like us to pray that the, first of all, this scripture starts by, calling um, the angel, of my, we can say the spirit of God that was leading um, the, the, the person that was leading Ezekiel, he, re he referred to the person, to the angel, to the spirit of God as his guide. He said, and then he, my guide, brought me back to the door of the house of the temple of the Lord. I want us to pray that this, we would, we would be guided and we will be led by the spirit of God in this day, in this time and in this season. We will not misstep. We will not be out of sync. We will be led by the spirit. You see, being led by the spirit is an intentional and it is a conscious thing. We must always, all, always never get tired of making that prayer that Lord cause me to be led by your spirit. Because just because you were led yesterday does not guarantee you will be led today. You have to align yourself. You have to be conscious 
you have to keep your focus gazed, you know, keep your eyes, keep your eyes and keep your mind gazed on the leading of the spirit for you to be guided by the spirit, for you to be led by the spirit of God. And so we lift up our voices this morning. Anywhere we may have made detours, anywhere we may have branched out, anywhere we may have started in the spirit, but ended up in the flesh and lost, Lord, the direction and the navigation of your spirit. My Lord and my God, we order our steps this morning. Guide us and lead us by your spirit, oh God. Guide us and lead us by your spirit. Father, because we cannot come into the office of the priesthood of Christ if we are not led by your spirit. We cannot understand the workings of the office of the priesthood of Christ if we are not led by your spirit, oh God. Lead us, Matele, order our steps. Order oh our steps, O oh God. Because Lord, we know that the presence of the blessing does not that does not mean or it does not equate to the leading and the guiding of your spirit. That does not be carried away by the waters and the rivers, O oh God, and the things that flow out of your presence and the sight, O oh God, of the one that causes us to move through the waters, O oh God. Show us how to navigate by the spirit. Cause us to be sensitive and alert, O God, to the leading of your spirit. Let our ears hear you, my God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, yes, Lord, lead us by your spirit. Show us, Lord, we were praying about the government of the spirit yesterday, amongst other things. And if you haven't listened to that teaching of yesterday, please go back and listen to it and pray as you listen to it. We were talking about the government of the Holy Spirit, being led, being governed by the Holy Spirit, you know, being in sync with the Holy Spirit. Father, we pray, Lord, that we would indeed be governed, led, and guided yes. by your spirit yes. in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus, and guided by your spirit. See, to be lead, to be led and to be governed by the spirit, it takes submission, it takes a following, it takes discipling, it takes um, you know, the ability to work as a disciple. You know, um, there's a way discipleship was explained, and it talked about, you know. When in, in um, back then in those days, um, when they talked about discipleship, they meant literally the person dressed like the person like their teacher. They spoke like their teacher, and literally they took steps like their teacher. So every step is like the person is walking in sand, and you know it leaves like um, imprints of their footsteps. So everywhere that the, the the step of the master had walked in. That disciple literally goes there and plants his own feet in it. So he's walking in his steps. He's not creating or crafting paths for himself. He's being, he's submitting himself to the steps and to the path that has been carved and um, charted out for him by his master. Father, this morning we submit and surrender ourselves to the government and the guiding of your spirit, oh God. Nothing mm -hmm. within us will resist or rebel mm -hmm. against the leading of your spirit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we will not resist you. We will not resist your voice, Lord. Father, we will not contend, Lord, with your spirit, but we will be led and governed by your spirit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the Spirit of God, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you because you are pushing me to change the spirit of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will not resist the spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, I will not grieve the spirit of God. Amen. 
Um, so the Bible, this scripture we read says, again, he measured a thousand cubits and led me through the water that was needed. I want us to pray and say, Father, help me. Help me, O oh God, that I may not remain stagnant as I stand in the midst of the mighty move of God. You see, it is easy to become religious. It is easy to be a watcher. It is even easy to be a sign. The one that invites people for the meetings, the one that is constantly going for many meetings, the one that is constantly being taught but is never receiving any impartation of wisdom or knowledge. You know, and that is why we pray that the Lord will cause us to submit and surrender our ways to Him. Because it is one thing for the teaching of God to be released over us, but it is another thing for us to receive it. And here, this scripture was talking about how um, he couldn't even go further anymore, you know, by wading. There was so, at this point, he had gotten past the point of human effort. It had to take the, 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 the move of the spirit to lead him. I want you to pray and say, Father, Help me. Let me not remain stagnant and let the wave and the power of your spirit mantle me in this season. Let your spirit encapsulate. Let it take over my life. Let your Holy Spirit be the only government over my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the wave and the power of your spirit mantle me. Let it mantle me in this season. Let every word this is a matter of destiny. I declare that I'm doing exceeding knowledge in Jesus' name. And so, Father, this morning we prophesy, oh God, and we speak to every tribal situation. Father, we declare, oh God, to of every tribal situation in our life, in our families, in everything, Lord, that concerns us, oh God, we declare that the wind of the spirit, the power of the spirit, the wave and the move of the spirit, the breath of the almighty is being released, Lord, upon every situation that is dry or that is dead or that is dying. And it is being revived right now in the mighty name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, you are equipping even the systems, oh God, that you have surrounded us with lord in this time and this season everything will come together in obedience and alignment with your spirit in the mighty name of jesus Mm-hmm. 
Baba. Yes, Holy Spirit, my Rebo Sutane Baba. Do your work, do your work, do your work to the will of the Father. Come and have your way, my Rebo Sunama. Penetrate into every situation, everything that is devoid of life. Revive it. Let the river of the living God flow. Let it touch, let it revive and restore everything around us. Let it restore our minds, let it restore our beings, our bodies, let it revive our lives, our altars of prayer, of worship, oh God, the altars of our priesthood, oh God, unto you, my Father. Everything that stands as a hindrance, oh God, Father, it gives way by the move of your spirit. It gives way by the wave of your spirit. It gives way by the wind of your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, it gives way by the power and the breath of your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, my Rebo Sutane Kataye de Bosunama, there is a release, there is a release, there is a release this morning. We make that prayer, oh God, and we agree and we believe with the witness of your word, oh God, that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven, loose on earth is loose in heaven. My Lord and my God, we pray, oh God, and declare that there is a release, oh God. Those that have been stagnated for years, oh God, that have been stagnant for years and been unable to move further by the move and the wave of your spirit, you are breaking every satanic hold. You are breaking, Lord, every hold, oh God, that is standing in the way. In the mighty name of Jesus, there is deliverance that is happening this morning. Deliverance, 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 oh God, for your people to arise, oh God, into the office, oh God, into the places, oh God, that you have called them to be, oh God, in the mighty name name of Jesus. Let it be, O God. Let it be, O God. Let it be, O God. God. According to your word, let it be, O God. According to your spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, Very interestingly, this scripture continues and it speaks about fishermen. You know, it speaks about fishermen. Let's get to it. So from, I will read from verse eight. Um, It says, then he said to me, these waters go out toward the eastern region and go down into the Araba. Then they go toward the sea, being made to flow into the sea and the waters of the Dead Sea shall be healed and become fresh. We thank you, Father, because every water of deadness, every stagnant water, is being healed, oh God. We pray for healing. There is a release, oh God. Father, we pray that the waters that flow from your throne and your presence, the fresh waters of your spirit, oh God, they are reviving every dead water, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for fresh grace. We thank you for a fresh flow. We thank you, Father, for freshness, oh God, of your spirit in this season, in this time, even upon this day, in the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 9 says, it will come about that every living creature which swarms in every place where the river goes will live. So it wasn't just about the river um, 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 and it wasn't just the river that was flowing. It is talking about the things that came in contact with the river. Um, It says, and there were a very great number of fish because these waters go there so that the waters of the sea are healed and become fresh. So everything will live wherever the water goes. Interestingly, when I see fish in the Bible, you see, um, it doesn't just talk about the fish that you eat, but it also talks about the fishes of men. You know, I remember when Jesus spoke with Peter, he told him that I will make you a fish of men. So Jesus Christ first gave him the fish that he needed to eat, but then he made him a fisher of men. There's a scripture I was sharing with um, um, the, with the team actually a couple of weeks ago. We've been on that scripture for some time. And it was talking about how Jesus told Peter that um, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, you know, that your, your faith will not fail. And when you are converted, um, you have to strengthen the brethren. So everything that the Lord does for us, we always see a pattern. We always see a system of restoration. It first starts with, the, you know, the, 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 the perspective that we see. And that is why we constantly pray that our eyes will see. Once we have been able to see and capture the thing, then the next thing Jesus did was that he prayed he made that prayer 
or Peter that his faith will not fail. Then he said, after you have been converted, you have to strengthen your, the brethren. It was like a system that he put in place, a blueprint for salvation that he gave to Peter. First, I will feed you. First, I will cause the rivers to flow through your life. First, I will cause the river to flow through the ankle, through the knee. But it gets to a point where you cannot continue to engage the way that you used to. You have to now begin to teach and to feed and to help others. That is the only way. That is rather one of the ways that is required of you in the season so that you are able to flow freely. So perhaps, like we said in the beginning, it may seem like, oh, I know that the Lord has called me to be a great man or a great woman. I know so and so and such and such. The Lord has said it. You don't need another person to come and lay hands on you and prophesy to you that you will be great, that the Lord has called you to be a prophet <laughs> to nations. But it seems as though that with the multitude of these words, the more you hear it, instead of you to feel blessed now, you are feeling more and more frustrated. The Lord is saying that I'm not just giving you fish to eat, but I am causing you to be a river that flows so that the fish can be revived. And Jesus said, when you are strengthened, when you are converted, it is your responsibility to strengthen the brethren. It is no longer for you to be seen as a fisherman, the one that catches fish, that eats fish, that roasts fish, that shares fish for people. No, but you now have to be a fisher of men. You have to be that net that the spirit of God can release over the waters that he's causing to flow in this season to catch the souls of men. My brothers, my my sisters, this is a time to win souls. It is no longer about, oh, my life will be, you have to open your mouth and declare. You have to be violent. The Bible says that violent take it by force. I was having a conversation with Pia yesterday and she was talking about how when the enemy is coming to plunder a man's life, when the thief is coming to steal from a person, they do it with violence and they do it with boldness. So when we are winning souls for the kingdom, we should not be shy. We should not be timid. We shouldn't be given, you know, we shouldn't be cutting corners. We need to be direct. We need to make bold statements. Why? Not because we are making these statements in ourselves, but because we are receiving the word of God, the intelligence of the spirits, the mandate from God that is telling us this is what is required of you. So when we stand, you know, to engage the world, we must do it in boldness. Let us lift up our voices this morning and let us just begin to pray and say, Father, translate me from the place where I am just eating fish, where I'm just catching fish for myself, Lord and make me a fisher of men. Show me how to function in the office of the evangelist. Show me, oh God, how to function, Lord, in the office of a soul winner. Show me, oh God, how to spread, oh God, the, 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 my life, oh God, to the excellent Lord that I am touching and feeding men, oh God, with the blessing of your word, with the blessing of the gifts that you have placed within me. One way that you are able to reach men and to bless lives is by using your gifts. And that's why you see this season, you must bring out all the jars. You must engage the system of the jars. You cannot sit on one thing and say that this is the, you know, um, I'm still thinking about it. The time for thinking about things has passed. This is not to say that you should not prepare. You must be prepared, but there are times and there are seasons when the Lord will call for parallel seasons where you are both preparing and you are engaging at the same time. You know, so I want us to pray that the Lord will give us the grace, the strength, the courage and the boldness to launch out, to, to move with the wave and the tide of the spirit of the spirit, that indeed we will be the ones that will reach the ends of the earth. We will be the ones that arise as, as the Debras. We will be the ones that arise as the Gideons. We will be the ones that arise in this time and in this season, carrying boldly the mandate of heaven in the name of Jesus. We will no longer sit and cover the light, the light, the light that God has given to us. In this season, indeed, we are arising to shine. We are arising to shine because the light of the word of God that Jesus, us every morning, Lord, we will no longer turn away. We will no longer respond, oh God, with, with, with shyness or or, or, he, or or false humility, oh God. But Father, we are taking your word for what it is and we are running with it. We are running with the vision. We are running with the mandate in the name of Jesus. I hope I have people on this call this morning that are praying. Father, make me a word in action, oh God, Father, in the name of Jesus, indeed, my God, in the name of Jesus, 
Amen. Amen. Verse 10 says, and it will come about that fishermen will stand beside it at the banks of the Dead Sea. From Engedi to Eneglaim, there will be dry places to spread nets. Father, we ask and pray that you would open our eyes to see the dry places, Lord, that are lurking around us. Help us, Lord, to identify the dry lands, the fallow lands, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to identify the places that you have called us to. Help us to identify the places where we see it, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, deliver us, oh God, from the mindset of comfort, oh God. Deliver us, oh God, in Jesus name we pray amen but its swamps and marshes will will not become fresh and wholesome for animal life they will, as the river subsides, be left encrusted with salt. The swamps and the marshes, the swamps and the marshes, the swamps are those things that are stagnant, you know, those things that release a stench, those things that don't allow life to flow and to move through it. And the scripture says that those swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They will be left encrusted with salt. They will be he left heavy laden. So what the Lord is doing is like he's um, causing a separation. I just pray, as we speak this was just pray that, Father, let there be a separation, oh God, of, death, mm. of life from death in my life by your spirit. Okay. Lord yes, Jesus, sure. let there be a separation of the swamps, oh God, and the marshes, oh God, that remain stagnant, oh God. Father, let them be separated from my life. Let them be separated from my life. Let there be a separation, oh God, by your spirit. Let it sever every time of life from death in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be a separation, my God, of associations, oh God, of communications, oh God, of 
that, that represents the marshes and the swamps, oh God. Father, of associations, of networks, oh God. Father, of situations, oh God, that do not um, encourage um, um, of the, 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 the life of Christ in me, my Lord and my God, that do not encourage the flow of your spirit to bring forth life in this time and in this season. Everything, oh God, that is a weapon or an agent of death and stagnation, oh God. Father, mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus, cause it to be yes, separated, yes, cause it to be removed yes, from my life in the mighty yes, name of Jesus. You see what happens when mm -hmm. you fast, actually. Fasting in itself is like a time where you are giving yourself to um, the removal of toxins from your body. You know, so you hear people, when people go on, sometimes they just go on water fast, they go on juice fast, they go on um, dry fast even sometimes you hear that by a certain day it's like a certain smell is released is expelled from your body you know and it's like i was going on it's not just in the physical even in the spiritual it's like i thought i was fasting i thought i was praying why am i seeing these things why am i experiencing why is it now that i'm having all kinds of crazy dreams what is happening is that a separation is happening you know there is a separation there's a severing there's a breaking of ties there's a breaking of yokes there's a breaking of soulish ties a breaking of altars that do not that do not service or do not serve our god when you separate yourself in a fast what you're doing is you're saying father remove every swamp and every marsh from me everything that does not allow your life to flow through me and the lord comes and he begins to deal with those things because you are surrendering yourself to him Oh my God, let there be a divine separation, the only one that can be done by your spirit. Father, because we cannot see these things, God, except your spirit leads us. Everything, oh God, that stands in the way, every swamp, oh God, every lifeless thing, oh God, not the ones that you have called for revival, but the ones that are there to be a stumbling block, the ones that will not allow your life to flow, yes, oh God, through us yes, and in us, my God. Yes, Separate and take away from yes, us, Jesus, in the mighty yes, name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, verse 12, Amen. by the river on its bank, um, okay, um, be left encrusted with salt, then verse 12, by the river on its bank, on one side and on the other will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither and their fruits will not fail. They shall bear every month because their water flows from the sanctuary and their fruits will be for food and their leaves for healing. Their fruits will be for food and their leaves for healing. So the Lord is even saying nothing about it will be wasted. Even the mm -hmm. leaves that fall to the ground, they will not fall to the ground. It will, it will be used by the kingdom. It will be used mm -hmm. by the master. Father, I mm -hmm. surrender my life, oh God, and I pray, oh, mm -hmm. oh Lord, over my life that I am a fruitful tree. I am a fruitful tree. I am a yes. fruitful tree. I am connected yes. to the vine. Therefore, I am a fruitful tree. The fruits of my life will feed nations, oh God, and the leaves, oh God, of my life, my God, will heal, oh God, lives. It will heal minds, oh God, in the name of Jesus, because of my connection connection, oh God, to your river that flows, my God. Through my life will be the ministry of feeding and healing. In the mighty name of Jesus, there will be no waste, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing wasted that comes for through my life in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything will be used to the glory of my God. Everything will be used to the glory of Yahweh. Everything will be used to the glory of my master everything will be used for the establishment of his kingdom everything will be used to showcase your glory even Jesus. my words Father even God, my thoughts Lord. even Jesus, the, the things that i do that the words out that out i speak God. everything Father, oh god that comes out of me my god Father, 
we thank you, oh God. We thank you, Father. Because you see, when the word of God talks about health, we understand that health is not just about feeling good or looking good. Health is rooted in the prosperity of the soul. You know, because the word of God says that I wish that you will prosper, even you will be in health and prosper, even as your soul prospers. And so, Father, we thank you because you are making each and every one of us a prosperous house in the name of Jesus, a prosperous house, a Amen. prosperous people, oh God. We are prospering, oh God, by reason of our connection and connectivity with your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, this is our season. We declare, Lord, prophetically that this is our season of prosperity. In the name of Jesus, prosperity on every side. We ourselves will prosper, Lord, and those that come into association, oh God, with us, Lord, even their lives will prosper, oh God. Their lives will prosper. Their health will prosper. Their finances will prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, the rain of Sutani and so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we reject, oh God, every um, every word, Lord, that we may have spoken concerning ourselves, Lord, that you have not said about us, Lord. We thank you, Father, because even in this season of, of perspective, Lord, where you are causing our eyes to see and causing our lives to be aligned, Lord, we arise, oh God, in authority because we are now walking in understanding of the identity that you have crafted for us in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you because we will not confess things that you have not called us, oh God. We will repeat the words that Jesus has said to us. We will speak these words. We will receive these words, oh God. We will receive them, Lord, and they will be imprinted in our hearts, oh God, until our lives are fully transformed, until we become the mirroring image of Christ Jesus upon the earth in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, your rivers are causing us to be prosperous. Father, we declare over ourselves that we are a prosperous people. Declare over yourself and say, Father, I am a prosperous person. I prosper in this season. I prosper on every side. I break through on every side. I am fruitful on every side. I am equipped by the spirit of God. Therefore, I lack no good being in the mighty name of Jesus. There is no such shortage of ideas. There is no shortage of intelligence. There is no shortage of resources for you because I am connected to the heavens. I am connected to the one that has the keys to the storehouses mm -hmm. of the heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Indeed, it is our season of prosperity, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, prosperity on every side, peace and prosperity on every side. It is not just flowing through this whole Lord, but it is flowing from us to the ends of the earth. It is flowing into our nation, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you would help us, oh God, and show us for systems, oh God, to set up, oh God, to ensure that your prosperity fills our lives, fills our bands, oh God, fills our nations, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, you have releasing systems of prosperity to us, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God. We give you praise. Lord, you are worthy. We exalt your good name. I want us to just bless the name of the Lord. I just say, Father, we thank you for what you have done for us this morning. Thank you for strengthening us, oh God. Thank you for encouraging us, energizing us, oh God. And Father, for convicting us by your word this morning. We thank you for every blessing we have received this morning. We pray, oh God, that that which you have added to us, God, nothing steals from us, but in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because the ministry of the wicked one to steal, kill, and destroy, Lord, it will not come near our dwelling place. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are marked by your spirit and we are marked by your blood. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And so we thank you, Father. We thank you, O oh God. 
because indeed we have come, oh God, into a new season. We have come, oh God, into a new day. This is the day of the Lord. This is the day of prosperity. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. We will prosper in this day because this Amen. is what the Spirit of the Lord is saying concerning Amen. us in the mighty Hallelujah. name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we thank you and we bless your name in Jesus. Jesus name. Amen. Um, Amen. Just before we um, rush up, I want us to um, just spend some time praying for Pastor EC. You know, I want us to commit her into God's hands. You know, I want us to declare over her. I want us to release the blessings of God over her life. You see, what we don't see, all we see is when she comes before us and she ministers and she prays for us and prays with us. But behind all of that, there are many battles that need to be fought. Yes. Behind all of that, there's a lot of contention for every person that is coming here there is a destiny you know that the lord has um um, um given her would i say the responsibility over to ensure that the will and the purpose of god is birthed in this time and in this season imagine a woman that goes into labor with one child in the physical and all the you know the pain and contractions and all of those things that go into it now imagine someone that is carrying the destiny of nations in her womb and is constantly you know birthing constantly doing the work of you know breaching the gap between heaven and the earth that is ensuring that god's people walk in their purpose you know imagine the kind of contractions and the kind of activity the spiritual activity that it will take for all of those things to come to pass so i want us to pray for her and release a blessing over her and just cover her in the blood of Jesus and declare that no weapon formed against her in this time and this season will prosper. Let us pray that her mortal being is quickened by the Spirit of God. Let us pray that Zion is releasing and deploying help for her. Let us pray that the blood of Jesus seals her and covers her in the name of Jesus. Let us pray that the hand of the enemy is saved from her in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray for her because it is in her rising that we arise. It is in her standing that we are able to stand. When she is able to meet that that we are blessed, you know, let us pray that the Lord will strengthen her in the name of Jesus. My God, she is coming to us. My God, she is coming to us. In the name of Jesus, the Bible tells us that we are praying for all of us. We are praying for all of us. Let us pray 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 for all of us. Lord, we give you praise and we thank you for your daughter, Pastor Isi Geneva. Thank you, Father, even for her obedience, oh God, to your call, for her obedience, oh God, to the assignment, oh God, for her obedience, Lord, to be a fisherman, for her obedience, oh God, in this office, oh God, where she partners, oh God, with the kingdom, oh God. Father, I pray, my my Lord and oh my God, that you will strengthen her, revitalize her mortal being, oh God, strengthen her, oh God, give her the supplies that are required for this season, oh God, in the name of Jesus, feed her and fill her with the life that flows from your river, in the mighty name of Jesus, seal and cover her by the blood of Jesus, Lord, round about her life, her family, oh God, and everything that concerns her, oh God, let her be even a first partaker, my God, even of the blessings, oh God, that you are releasing in this season in the mighty name of Jesus, my God. I pray that your mighty hand of protection Amen. will be upon her, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Her Amen. family is covered by the blood of Jesus. Your blessings, oh God, keep her, oh God. Your presence keeps her. Your peace keeps her, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for it is well with her. It is well with her ministry. It is well with her family. It is well with everything that concerns her, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Mm. We bless your holy name, O oh God. And we thank you for everybody that has been present on this call this morning. We thank you, O oh God, for what you are doing for each and every one of us in this season. As we 
continue to stay in your word and give ourselves to the governing and the guiding of your spirit. Indeed, let us see new and new and new mercies every day, oh God. Indeed, let us see new and new and new possibilities, oh God, in your spirit every day in the mighty name of Jesus. For that person, that creative person that may feel like maybe they have hit a writer's block or maybe they have reached some kind of creative block, my God, I thank you because those blocks, oh God, those, 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 those things, oh God, those stumbling blocks are lifted right now. They are lifted. Every ungodly burden is lifted this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because this is a day of deliverance, a day of liberation, oh God. We walk in the fullness of your prosperity and your peace, Father, and your kingdom is being established through us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We give you praise. Mm -hmm. We say thank you. We exalt your holy name, oh God. Mm -hmm. Each and every one of us will testify in the mighty name of Jesus. We have prayed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Thank you for staying on the call, for staying with me, for praying with me. Um, the recording will be shared soon. Let's listen. Let us continue to stay in the presence of God, you know, um, and let us um, come in come back together again tomorrow um, just to pray and to fellowship with God. I believe Pastor Isi will be with us tomorrow so we'll continue in prayers um, and in the teachings with PI God tomorrow. Bless God bless you, you all. Bless Have you. a great day. Thank you, Mark. God bless Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank 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 you.